it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to knit the Minty Eyelets Cowl. This is a really great project for beginner knitters. We have some very simple stitches. We're going to learn how to make some eyelets that are very, very easy to do. We're also going to be using a yarn cake. So the color changes are all going to be done for us. I have um, a yarn cake. We're, we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, this is baby yarn. So it feels great around the neck. It has some really pretty colors and it's just a really fun little project to do. The finished cowl has a width of about five inches and a circumference of about 30 inches. So it's just a nice little small lightweight little cowl that you can throw on. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure. We're going to be using a pair of US 8 five millimeter straight knitting needles. I'm using my trusty Clover bamboo knitting needles for this. You'll also need a cake of Yarnspiration's Karen Baby Cakes. Uh, I chose this because it's going to be worn around the neck and baby yarn is so soft and it just makes a really great choice for a cowl. This is, if we look at the label, this is a four medium on the yarn weight scale and it does recommend the US 8 needles. So uh, if you're looking to substitute yarn, just look for something with the US 8 recommended needle, the four medium on the yarn weight scale. And as a side note, each one of these cakes is 231 yards, 211 meters, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. Now this is machine wash and dry, so that's really nice. You can just uh, have an easy care item. And it is self-striping, so the yarn colors are gonna kind of do all the work for us. Now I'm gonna be using the colorway called Dreamy Mint, and um, this is a really pretty kind of wintry uh, color palette that we'll be using. So let's get started. We're going to begin by using the long tail cast on to get the stitches onto our needle. Now I switched to the dark background just so you could see because the yarn is very light. We'll just need one needle to get us started and I like to do almost like a, a wingspan of yarn. I'd rather do a little bit extra than not enough. So what we want to do is wrap the yarn around our fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your needle, bring up that loop and tighten. This is our first stitch. So what we want to do for the long tail cast on is you want to have the yarn connected to your yarn cake over here going out the front here and then your tail um, you want coming towards you. So you're going to let it hang down in sort of like an upside down V and what you're going to do is take your index finger and your thumb and let me just back up a little bit so you can see the whole picture here. You're going to come in from the back, grab it with your pinky, and open it up. So see how it looks like a diamond? Your yarn looks like a little diamond. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come under your thumb. You're going to go around and under that index finger loop. And then you're going to come through the thumb loop again and tighten. Okay? Now I'm going to do a few of these zoomed out and then I'll do a few zoomed in so you can see the up close version. But I wanted you to kind of see how the yarn is um, configured right now. So come in from the back with your index and your thumb, grab it with your pinky, open it up to that diamond shape, go around, around, and through. Do it again. You don't have to drop the yarn, you can just hold on to it around, around, and through. Keep it open in that diamond shape, around, around, and through. Now let me zoom in so you can see the up close version. So we have our yarn configured the same way. We're gonna hold it open like that. We're gonna go around, around that index finger, and through. Now, I didn't mention this before, but we're casting on 20 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit. If you need to back up the video and rewatch this at any time, you can do that if you need to see the slower version. So again, we have six stitches. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, 18, 19, and 20. So here are our beginning stitches, as you can see. So we're gonna kinda of keep the tail out of the way for now. And then for row one, we're going to knit all the stitches. So we're gonna go a little slow, and then later on we'll pick up speed. So for knitting, what you wanna do is take the needle in your right hand, come up under that first stitch, so it's under that top needle, and then you're going to go around the bottom needle, bring it through, see how I'm picking up that loop right there? And then push it off the needle, okay? We're gonna do this a bunch more times together. Come up under, wrap the yarn around that bottom needle, bring it from back to front, picking up that loop, and push it off. Come up under, let me just scoot this out of the way. Now we came up under, wrap the yarn around that bottom needle, bring the needle from back to front, picking up that little loop there, and push it off. We can slide things up as needed. Insert the needle, wrap it around, bring it from back to front, push it off. Insert the needle, wrap it around, push it off. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit so you can see. We're just knitting all the stitches all the way across. Again, feel free to back up the video. There's also a slow motion feature. If you wanna see it very, very slow, you can do that as well. Okay, we're just knitting all the stitches of this row. Okay. We just have a few more stitches left. Now I will say, if you have trouble, a lot of times when we're learning how to knit, this first row is so super tight and a little bit difficult to knit. You can go up a needle size for your long tail cast on and then switch back down to a smaller needle if you're having trouble with some tightness. But as you're learning uh, and you practice more, your hands will relax a little bit more. Okay, so that was row one. We knit all the stitches. And as you can see, this isn't gonna be a super wide cowl. We're gonna, um, it's gonna be like a, like kind of like a drapey, narrower cowl, okay? So for row one, we knit all the stitches. For row two, now this is such a super easy cowl, and you'll see why, because for row two, we're going to also knit all the stitches. Okay, so just, I'm gonna just zip through this row pretty quick. Row two, we're just knitting all of the stitches. Now there's also a style of knitting, if you're not familiar with it, uh, called continental knitting. And you can, um, sometimes for people who crochet, it's a little bit easier to transition to continental knitting. Um, definitely feel free to check that out as well if you um, wanna try that style of knitting. It still makes the same stitches, it just, you just hold everything differently. Okay, so we're just knitting all the way across here. And grab some more yarn when you're ready for that. And we're just taking this all the way across. Okay. So that's row two, super easy, right? And we're starting to get a little tiny bit of length on here. Flip your needle over for the next row. And for row three, once again, we're gonna just knit all those stitches. We're gonna, we're gonna come up to our eyelet row soon, not quite yet though. For people who are not fans of purling, or if you're not quite ready to learn that yet, this is a great pattern because you don't have to purl anything. So for row three, once again, we're just knitting all the stitches, okay? So if you just need to practice some basic, easy knitting, this is a wonderful project to get started. We're gonna put a little eyelet row in, but it's super duper easy, I promise it's no big deal. If you can knit, you can absolutely do the increase and the decrease that I'll show you, okay? So once again, row three, just knitting all those stitches. Okay, pushing things back as needed. 
I, I kind of get um, worried about my stitches falling off the edge of the needle when everything's bunched up like that. Okay, so for row four, we're going to knit all the stitches again, okay? And then the row after that, we'll be doing our uh, eyelets. So once again, insert your needle into that first row. We flipped it over. If you notice, and we're just knitting all these stitches, but if you notice, we're just passing our work from one hand to the other. So as we knit, the work shifts from our left needle to our right needle, okay? So again, we're just knitting all these stitches uh, for row four. And I wanted to also mention that I'm using bamboo needles. I really like the way they feel in the hand, but if you're learning how to knit, um, or perhaps you're ready for something new, you might want to try metal needles or, or a different type of wood, or uh, they do make plastic needles and things like that. Uh, so you might want to try some other materials if you're ready to do that. Okay, so I'm just knitting that last stitch of the row. Now we're ready for our eyelet row. So rows one through four, we just knit all the stitches, and you can see we're getting some really pretty little uh, neutral texture with our yarn. Flip the needle over once again, and now we're going to get into our eyelet rows. Let me just get a little bit more yarn for us here. And what we're going to do for this row, row five, is we're going to knit two stitches. So knit a stitch, knit another stitch. And then what we're going to do is yarn over. And all that means is you're just going to wrap the yarn around that right needle. And then we're going to knit two together. So that's just like the knit stitch. The only difference is you're inserting the needle into two. So see these two? We're going to insert it into both of those at the same time. And then wrap the yarn around that bottom needle and knit it as normal. Okay? So the yarn over is an increase and creates a decorative hold. The knit two together is a decrease. So by combining those two together, it's going to give us this just this nice little decorative row of holes all the way, all the way across. So let's do a yarn over and a knit two together. We're going to do this all the way across until there's just two stitches left. Okay, so yarn over, knit two together. Easy as pie. Yarn over, knit two together. Push them up as needed, yarn over. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, and knit two together. And remember I said we're going to go until there's just two stitches left, so here we are. And then you're just going to knit, knit each one of these stitches individually this time. So knit the second to last stitch, knit the very last stitch, okay? So we can kind of slide this back and look at our lovely handiwork. You can just sort of see those eyelets starting to emerge. So what we're going to do now is keep repeating rows one through five over and over. Now you, you have everything you need to know to move forward, but we're gonna just repeat rows one through five over and over and over again until your cowl is uh, able to be comfortably wrapped around your neck at any length you choose, depending on what yarn you're using, or until you've used up your cake, whatever occurs first. So I'm gonna keep repeating rows one through five, and if you need to back up the video or kind of jot things down, that's perfectly fine. If you need to use the slow motion feature, feel free to do that. But you're just gonna repeat rows one through five over and over and over until you get the length that you like or you run out of yarn, whatever occurs first or what you prefer. So keep going with that, and then when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you how to finish off your piece and how to uh, bind off. That's getting it off the needle, and then we're gonna seam it together. One more thing I wanna mention. When you repeat rows five 
over and over and over, you want to make sure you end on row four. That was the all knit row. You don't want to end on row five for your project because ending on that eyelet row is going to look not as nice. You want that nice um, border to kind of mimic what we've done here. All right, so I kept repeating my rows and I got about 26 inches. That's gonna make a nice little light neck wrap. Um, I didn't use all the yarn. It's still a little bit left in my cake, but I wanted to kind of stop when I had some of the aqua so I could bind off. All right, to bind off, all we're gonna do is knit two stitches to begin. This is the basic bind off. There are other bind offs. If you have knitted before and you have a bind off that you prefer, definitely feel free to do that. So just knit two stitches, one, two. And then what you're gonna do is take your left needle and, and go up under that loop, the one that's closest to you, and lift it up over that other one and off the needle, okay? Knit one more stitch and then do the same thing. Lift it up over and off the needle, knit one stitch, lift it up, over and off the needle, knit a stitch, lift it up, over and off, and then we're just gonna do this all the way across until we're left with just one loop um, remaining on our needle. So as you can see, we're starting to get a little edge over here that's free from the needles. Okay, so just keep doing this. Knit your stitch, lift it up, over, and off. Knit the stitch, lift that loop up, over, and off. Just do this until all your loops are gone. Okay, I just have one loop here. I'm just gonna knit that last stitch. And then take that last loop, bring it up, over, and off. Okay, so now we have this nice little edge. And what we're gonna do now, let me just grab my scissors and you need to grab a tapestry needle. And what you can do now is just cut the yarn. Let's leave a, actually let's leave a nice long tail for this because we can use this to seam it as well. So let's do about, oh, 16 inches or so. We don't need a ton, but a nice long tail is perfect. So then what you can do is kind of loosen up your needle to make that loop bigger. And take that tail that we just cut and just put it through that loop. And then just sort of snug the knot down as much as you can to, to fasten that off securely, okay? Before we start seaming, we're gonna use this long tail to seam, but before we start doing that, let's hop over to the other end here and grab your tapestry needle. Let's weave this end in really quick so we can get it out of the way. Now, if you have a color change, mine is a gradual, I have a long section of this uh, taupe color here, but if, you, if your color change is a little quicker than mine, just stay in the same color when you're weaving in your tail because you want to um, not have your tail show, okay? You want it to be as camouflaged as possible. All right, just take it in one direction through a few stitches. And whenever you're doing finish work, you just wanna take your time and make it nice and neat. Okay, and then just come back in the other direction. Just going into some of those stitches here. And then grab your scissors. Give it a little trim. Okay, now we're ready to seam. Now, if you made yours really long and you wanna just make it into a scarf, of course, feel free to do that. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna sandwich our ends together and create a cute little cowl. Now you can also, before you seam, give it a little twist. You could twist this before you seam it, make a, like, a little Mobius. But I'm gonna just gonna make mine a very nice, simple cylinder shape, okay? So let's get our ends all lined up, sandwiched together. And then we're gonna take our tail, we've threaded it with our tapestry needle. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And then you're gonna start on the corners here, and we're gonna go on both layers. 
and just work a whip stitch. Now a whip stitch is a really simple seam and all it is essentially is a spiral that runs through your work. Um, it's nice and invisible, especially when you turn it right side out. Now, I didn't mention this before, but our uh, rectangle that we knitted up is reversible. It looks the same on both sides. So you don't really have to pick your favorite side for this, but if you have a side you prefer, then we're, this is technically the inside right now, because see, I can see my seam a little bit. But um, when you do whip stitching on all of the same color, it's like almost invisible. Now I have it, uh, the mint going through this taupe color, so you can see it a little bit, but it's okay. Once we flip it right side out, uh, you won't be able to see it anymore. So we're just gonna take our whip stitch all the way down. I'm doing uh, one of my whip stitches in each one of these stitches along the edge, just to keep everything uniform and consistent looking. You don't wanna skip a huge space and then do a bunch, you know, bunched up together. You just wanna keep it nice and even. And our little cowl is pretty narrow, so you can whip stitch this up pretty quickly, okay? So we're just gonna keep going all the way across until we get to the corner, which we're almost there. And then what I like to do, whenever you're joining two things that have squared off sides, sometimes when you join them together, you get a little dip, okay? So I like to just take it a little bit farther around the side, not too much, but that'll eliminate that dip. Now go back in one more time, and you're gonna leave, see this loop that I left here? Take your needle, go through that loop, and that'll just create our knot, okay? And then I am gonna do that one more time just to make sure, whenever you have a wearable, you wanna make sure everything's nice and secure because you will take it off, put it back on, throw it around, and you wanna just make sure it's nice and secure, okay? So here is our whip stitch. Looks pretty nice and neat. And on the other side, it looks great, okay? So like I mentioned before, we wanna take the same color of our tail when we're weaving in through the same section. So in this case, um, I'm gonna keep my tail, because my tail is mint, I'm gonna keep it in the mint section of my project, okay? So just real nice and easy, just take it in one direction. So nice and easy, just take it in one direction. Come back in the other direction with your tail. Okay, and then just give it a little snip. clear everything aside here and we can turn it back out. Our stitch looks great. And we have a cute little lightweight cowl. It has some beautiful little eyelets, some interesting color changes that we didn't have to do a thing to change. And that's it. That's how you knit the Minty Eyelets Cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.